Welcome to our short video on splatting. Haven't you always wanted to know how to splat? In PowerShell, splatting refers to passing parameters to a commandlet as a predefined block using a hash table. Let's take a look. Here in our script, first I just have a, a little four line error testing thing that makes sure I have administrative credentials. And if I don't, it prompts me for a password. Now I'm going to use the get WMI object commandlet and I'm going to pass it a bunch of parameters. We need to tell what computer we want to work with, what class we're going to use, if we want to filter the results. And of course we have to pass those credentials and we'll do so and it works just fine. There's only one drive on that computer that meets those requirements. And there it goes. Now with things in PowerShell, like aliases and short form for parameters and positional parameters where we could leave out most of these names and just pass them in the correct order. This can become harder to read. It's a good practice when you're writing a script to, to use the full commandlet name, to spell out the parameters, to make it very clear what you're doing. Of course, when you're just in the shell, just doing something quickly, then, you know, do whatever works. But when you're making something that's going to last for a while, it's going to be a lot easier to come back to if it's spelled out nicely which gives rise to the idea of splatting introduced in PowerShell 2.0. Splatting is simply that rather than listing out all the parameters in the command line, wherever they might fall, we can define them in advance. And we're going to use a hash table. Now a hash table is similar to a dictionary object where there are keys and values or names and values. In this case, it's a hash table that's structured with the name being the name of the parameter and the value being what we would pass as that parameter. And you'll notice in this case, we're actually passing an object for the credentials. The rest are all strings and they look pretty similar. So the class, there it is, the order's not the same and the order doesn't matter. The class is win32 logical disk. There's our computer name. There's our filter and our credential. So we define these in a hash table. In this case, the at symbol means we're taking this variable and we're defining it as a hash table. Then we pass the hash table to the commandlet. Now you'll notice that we don't use a dollar sign here on the variable name. We use the at sign again. And so when we do this, it executes exactly the same way. And in fact, if we run the whole script together, you'll see that the output is exactly the same. This is largely a stylistic consideration. Some coders, some shops prefer it to be this way. All the variables or all the parameters are defined up at the top of the file. It's very clear. It's very easy to edit. Some people find this more logical to define them in the flow when you're calling the commandlet. It's entirely a preference thing. Both have exactly the same functionality in terms of execution. You might want to just uh, understand or make sure you understand the use of the dollar sign when defining a variable and the use of the at sign. Now the at sign up here means something different than the at sign down here. This at sign means what follows is going to be a hash table, a set of names and values. When actually used to be passed to a commandlet, it means rather than interpreting what follows as text or interpreting it as a variable name to be expanded to text, it says, assume all the characters that follow until the next delimiter represent a name of a hash table. And that hash table contains name value pairs that represent the parameters to act on. So it's got a cool name. I don't know where the name came from. It's got a cool name, can save you a little bit of time, can make your files look a little bit neater. If you like the look this way, certainly use it. If you prefer to do it this way, that's good too.